Jarris Walker, he can make that jumper. He's the McDonald's All-American, the highly touted five-star recruit. And on, and on the first possession, John, Houston winds up settling for a shot from Jarris Walker. They weren't able to really penetrate against the Virginia defense, and that's what Virginia's going to try to do. Houston more aggressive. They'll trap some ball screens. They double in the post, as does Virginia. But this is an aggressive trap committee room. G.A. Clark with a shot fake. Beats the buzzer. First bucket for the Cavaliers. T.H. Clark over his last three games has been excellent. He's averaged over 17 points and 10 free throws per game over the last three games. And he's off to a good start knocking down his first one. Juwan Roberts trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Houston comes out wearing the road red. Virginia wearing the home white. Our officials, Ron Groover, Pat Driscoll, Brent Hampton. We are getting set to tip it up here in Charlottesville. And the Cougars have won the tip. Now this is an excellent defensive backcourt for Virginia with Reese Beekman and Kihei Clark. Both are outstanding defenders. Jamal Shedd, he's the vocal leader on the floor. Marcus Sasser, he's the guy who's going to get you buckets. Jarris Walker, he can make that jumper. He's the McDonald's All-American, the highly touted five-star recruit. And on, and on the first possession, John, Houston winds up settling for a shot from Jarris Walker. They weren't able to really penetrate against the Virginia defense, and that's what Virginia's going to try to do. Houston more aggressive. They'll trap some ball screens. They double in the post, as does Virginia. But this is an aggressive trapping and doubling team. Yeah, these two teams played last year. Houston won that game, but this is a different team for Houston. They lost four starters. That ball stripped away. It'll stay with Virginia. Virginia, they returned five starters. This is a veteran team for the Cavaliers. Yeah, these two teams played last year about this time, and it was a blowout. Uh, Houston won the game at the Fertitta Center by 20, and I'm not sure that the game was that close. But... Virginia was a much better team later in the season, an NCAA tournament quality team that just dragged a bad non-conference record with them into the committee room. G.A. Clark with a shot fake, beats the buzzer. First bucket for the Cavaliers. G.A. Clark over his last three games has been excellent. He's averaged over 17 points and 10 free throws per game over the last three games, and he's off to a good start knocking down his first one. Juwan Roberts trying to go one-on-one -on -one in the post, picks up his dribble, a tough shot over the backboard. This crowd here, they love to see good D. Well, Caden Shedrick is a really good shot blocker and leading Virginian steals, just held his ground and was chucking Juwan Roberts to try to keep him from getting an angle and just walling up. So we know both teams can play defense, but Virginia, this is actually their highest scoring team Tony Bennett has ever had. They are averaging almost 72 points per game. They've got guys who can fill it up. Well, their 19 team was a much better scoring team, but this one is off to a much better start early. In part because of the improvement of Reese Beekman and Ben Vanderplas, who has come in from Ohio that can provide them some additional scoring to help them spread the floor. Good shot fake. And, you know, Kihei Clark, he's not going to shoot over you. He uses that shot fake to get the defender, Jamal Shedd, off balance, one dribble, and he's into a wide open three as a result. Kihei Clark came back for his fifth year. The graduate student out of Woodland Hills, California. He has been so good in his career. First all-time in school history in terms of minutes played. Fourth in terms of assists. And he's got the first five points for Virginia. He came into Tony Bennett's office and said, I'd, I'd like to come back if you'll have me. And I don't think Tony took very long to say, I think I'll have you, Kihei. No backcourt violation. That ball was tipped by Virginia. Mark trying to get downhill. Pull-up jumper. No good. Good box out by Caden Shedrick on Jawan Roberts, who's an excellent offensive rebounder. Here's Beekman has it taken away by Sasser. Houston wants to push the pace in transition. Sasser, pull up three, off the mark, no good. But look at that transition D by Houston. Well, Houston just doesn't get back. They get back with the intent of disrupting and stealing the ball. And both Marcus Sasser and Jamal Shedd are very aggressive on the defensive end. 
In the post they go again with Roberts spinning with the left hand, no good. Houston still looking for their first bucket, and then Roberts commits the foul on the rebound. Houston to start this game 0 for 5 from the floor. Well, Houston has not had a clean look. Maybe Marcus Sasser in transition after that steal. But Jaden Gardner doing a nice job staying in front. And Roberts wants to get back to that left hand and right shoulder. He is a left-handed player. And Virginia knows that in the scouting report. Virginia will give you some different looks on the offensive end. They can go with ball screens and their flow offense. Great pass. Sedgwick throwing it down off the assist from Kihei Clark. Too much attention to the ball action run in the middle of the floor. That eliminates weak side help. And an easy bucket for Virginia. Virginia last played last Tuesday in a win over James Madison. It gave a time for Reese Beekman to heal his tweaked hamstring. And he looks good early on. Jamal Shedd. Ice cold start for the Cougars. Everything's a jump shot for Houston thus far. Pick and roll. This is Jaden Gardner working baseline. He is fouled. And we're in a trip to the free throw line. Well, the Houston coaches have seen a lot of Jaden Gardner. When he was at East Carolina, he averaged close to 16 points a game, nine rebounds against Houston in five games. And Gardner has a great shot fake. And you can talk in the scouting report all you want to about stay down on that fake. It's just difficult to do. Jade Gardner, you said the transfer from ECU. This is his second year in the system for Virginia. It seems like it takes guys at least a year to get accustomed to playing defense under Tony Bennett. And Jaden Gardner looking to make the jump this year. Oh. I thought Virginia played good defense last year. It's just the, the, the Wahoos had a tough time scoring. And that's changed this year. Reese Beekman is a much more capable scorer. Armand Franklin's hitting shots at a higher rate. They're a much better offensive team than they were a year ago. Who's going to provide the offense for Houston? Well, if they play five on five for 40 minutes, points are going to come at a premium. Mark getting inside, Roberts free, and there's the layup to go for Houston. And all set up by just minimal penetration by Tremont Mark. You have to get into the teeth of the defense and force help in order to get anything around the lane. This is a Houston team that was ranked number one in the country until they lost against Alabama. They blew a 15-point lead in that game. Kihei Clark, another three short. Well, Virginia, when they set a ball screen in the middle of the floor, you have to be attentive to getting back. You can't stay with the ball too long. That's what Houston and Virginia, they are right up there with the best in the country. And all those teams... Went to the Final Four, won championships, championship game. I think there's a correlation between being really good in the regular season and having postseason success. The big, er, big struggle early on for Houston is finding the scoring touch. One for seven to start this game from the floor. This is a, a really good defense with their gap protection. They make it really difficult to find openings because of their help side. Jamal Shedd, the tough take to the bucket. And that may be, John, what it takes in this game is trying to run offense, but then having to make individual plays at times at the end of a clock. Well, Kelvin Sampson, he got on Marcus Sasser after that loss to Alabama. Two for 11 from the floor, and he said, it wasn't so much that you missed shots, it was the shot selection. Armand Franklin, his three is in and out. So on the offensive end, Coach Sampson wants the Cougars to figure out what the defense has given them and then get your teammates involved. There's the extra pass to Sasser, wide open, but he missed the three. And a fight on the floor. Fouls going against Javier Francis. Well, Houston racking up some fouls early. And Virginia has had an advantage all season long from the free throw line. It's a team that doesn't get called for a lot of fouls. And so they wind up having an advantage toward the end of the game with getting into the one and one earlier. And in low possession games and low scoring games, that's a big deal. Checking into the first time for Virginia. Ben Vanderplas, he's the Ohio transfer. He has over 1,600 career points, along with Isaac McNeely, the freshman from West Virginia. He is the sharpshooter for the Cavaliers. 
Vanderplas, his first three, misses everything. Well, Vanderplas can play inside or out. And he can guard multiple positions. He, he's a really good passer, too. So he's been a really nice addition to this program. Good Sasser pass. gets downhill. Up and under. What a finish by Francis and the foul. Well, Javier Francis is shooting close to 70% from the field in large measure because he gets most of his shots around the basket. But great penetration by Marcus Sasser. That draws help. If you have to help up, it's going to be a drop-off or a lob. So Beekman comes back into the game, will give Armand Franklin a breather. And Houston right now, after getting blanked early on, on a 7-0 run. Well, it's not hard to figure out. One, Reese Beekman comes back on the floor to make Virginia better defensively guarding the ball. But you, know, you settle for jump shots. It's a lot tougher to rebound those. But getting the ball into the paint, Houston wants to touch the paint as often as possible to draw help so they can play out of it. Here's the sharpshooter, McNeely, and he nails his first three. And he's a good-looking player. 11 of his 12 field goals are threes. He's only had one two-point field goal on the season, so you have to chase him off the three-point line. Houston trying to work inside. McNeely comes away with the steal, but he was stepping out of bounds. It'll stay here with Houston. All right, Jay, so I had Virginia's games in Vegas, the big wins over Baylor and Illinois. The thing that stood out for me was this team is super athletic. I think a lot more athletic than people realize for this year. Yeah, they, they've got good athletes. I mean, this is a good basketball team. But I think the biggest difference is they are, they are much more proficient scoring. And, you know, when you can't score, which, which was a difficulty last year, this is not a great shooting Virginia team. It puts a ton of pressure on your defense to get stop after stop. Sasser had it stripped going up, still put it up. Beekman with a rebound. And all five Virginia players on the defensive glass. And what a great defensive play to knock that away from Sasser when he's going up. Sasser 0 for 3 to start this game. Beekman, he'll let it fly. And he rips down the net for 3. Well, you can see the work that Reese Beekman has done on that shot. He was capable of making that shot last year, but now he is reliable as a perimeter shooter. Virginia shooting 50% from downtown to start this game, a 15-7 lead. Good pump fake. Sasser can't find the bucket, but Roberts on the offensive glass puts it back in. Well, Juwan Roberts is coming off a big rebounding game in his last one. He had five offensive rebounds against Alabama a couple games ago of his nine rebounds. Also had five blocks against the Crimson Tide. He's just relentless on the offensive glass. T.A. Clark with the penetration finds Vanderplas. Crowd's getting excited. They are in every bucket here to start this game in Charlottesville. Beekman pounded by Sasser picking up his dribble. Two on the shot clock. Gotta get it up. And a shot clock violation. Fourth turnover of the game for Virginia. They've got a six-point lead under 12 minutes to play here this first half. There's a skip pass on airtime. Everybody's moving. So they're there on the catch. Tony, Tony Bennett from his father, Dick Bennett, his uncle, Jack Bennett. Great defensive coaches. And this is yet another excellent Virginia defensive team that makes it really difficult for you to get easy shots. Everything's contested. Roberts has been the bright spot early on for Houston. He's been trying to find that soft spot close to the rim. Well, Virginia, or excuse me, Houston's done a much better job of trying to attack inside, attack the paint, then attack out of the middle of the floor. Houston trying to save it, tipped away. Shed trying to hustle it down, but Franklin corralling it. Inside, Garner with his turnaround, tipped up. And that's what Houston prides themselves. They hit the glass hard. Yeah, a relentless rebounding team. That's part of their DNA. They work on it every day. They have a drill Kelvin Sampson calls the bubble drill. They put lids on the basket and play, so every shot literally is a missed shot. For Houston, 10 of their 11 points have come in the paint, have not been able to find that outside touch yet. 
Franklin rising up off the mark. And it's saved by Houston. So if you're the Cougars, what's the secret to solving this pack line D? You have to be patient, and you've got to cut really hard and move the ball. I mean, the ball moves faster than the defense can, not always against Virginia. But, John, it's not a normal game. You're going to have to get used to uncomfortable situations, and you're not going to you're not going to be able to get a rhythm against Virginia. It's just a rhythm disrupting team. It's a slower pace, and if you're expecting to get shots the way you normally do, it's just not going to happen. See all the disruption in the backcourt. Now it's eight seconds on the shot clock when Sasser will inbound. Houston's got to get something going. Two on the shot clock. Sasser, he didn't even see it. Shot clock violation. And Kelvin Sampson bent over at the waist that his most experienced player probably didn't even look up at the shot clock before the ball was inbounded. We played 10 minutes here in this first half. Virginia with a four-point lead in this top five showdown. Things you have to watch against Virginia is when they penetrate, they'll rotate somebody behind the ball. That's tough to deal with. Vanderplas misses the three. Rebound goes to Houston. Virginia has missed their last four field goals. Haven't scored in over three minutes. And McNeely doing a nice job guarding Juwan Roberts in the post. Got switched back off now on Sharp. Mark doesn't use the screen, goes to his strong hand to the left. Sasser from three, got it. That's a good sign for Houston. Well, it was all created off the penetration. The penetration draws help. You leave Marcus Sasser all alone, he gets a step in three. But Mark made that with the penetration down the middle of the floor. The attack in the middle third, it's awfully difficult for help to recover back out. Ramon Mark just going right down the lane line. He had a pass to his left, but also a pass to his right because of the great spacing by Houston. This is a really good individual play by Tremont Mark. See that clock on the right side of your screen, Virginia. No points in over four minutes now. Started this game up 9-0. Houston has come back trailing by one. McNeely from downtown off the mark. And Virginia's not an offensive rebounding team. They'd rather get back. They only send two guys to the offensive class. There's good pass. Roberts slamming it home, and Houston, their first lead of the day. Well, Tony Bennett can't be happy with that because there was no pressure on Jarris Walker as he made that pass. He was just able to look right over the defense and deliver that to Juwan Roberts. And you have to put pressure on the ball, take away that vision. Usually Virginia very good at that. Roberts leads the way. He's got eight points for Houston. Clark splits the D. Someone's open. Franklin with the penetration. Can't get the lefty land to go. But the rebound and the offensive putback is there for Gardner. Really nice job by Armand Franklin of driving that closeout. Caught it, ready to shoot, and then drove right in the middle and broke down the Houston defense. Houston's got to start coming off these ball screens and go right into the hedge defender, the help defender, and try to draw a foul. Walker's three is short, pulling it down as Franklin. Houston just one for six from downtown. Here comes the post-to-post -post double. They call it monster. They found the open look with Kihei Clark, and Shedrick couldn't save it. We got a good one here in Charlottesville, a one-point game in this top-five matchup. For five after their loss to Alabama a couple games ago. I'm not sure UConn's not the best team in the country. I mean, Jordan Hawkins is a spectacular shooter. Andre Jackson, one of the best quote-unquote role players in the country. UConn has it all. And Marcus Sasser 
two threes in this ball game as Houston retakes the lead. Well, Houston very good out of timeouts. You know, Kelvin Sampson and his team work on their ATO game. And they, they tried to get they're trying to get Marcus Sasser untracked to where he's more aggressive. Reggie Chaney just checked into the game for the first time for Houston. And Chaney gets dumped on by Shedrick. They're just too easy. The ball went right down the gut with a little lob pass. Caden Shedrick, man, what a jump from last year. Shed getting all the way to the rim. That is blocked, but they call a goal 10 on Shedrick. And right now, the freshman Ryan Dunn for Virginia in the ball game. As you see, Shed give a little hesitation move, and Shedrick had to take it right over the rim and knock it away. But with Ryan Dunn in the game, he's going to guard Marcus Sasser, and he's got tremendous length and athleticism. A moving screen called on Shedrick. So Marcus Sasser, tough start. He was 0 for 4 to start this game, but ever since he's knocked down his last two threes. And Jay, it seems like they've been in, in rhythm in the offense. He's had wide open looks. Well, they've done a couple of things to free him up. And that's where he needed to go right into Vanderplas. Almost was able to pick up a foul. Good kick. Mark gets to that elbow, short on the jumper, sky high for the rebound. Is that freshman Ryan Dunn? He is a big time athlete. And that's one of the things that Virginia has been missing is that super athletic foreman defensively. And at some point in his career, Ryan Dunn is going to be that for Virginia. Clark gets all the way to the rim, bumped and won. No, they call a travel first, no bucket. Great little hesitation move. I guess Ron Gruber had the walk before the foul was called, so just overruled it. So this Virginia team who averages under 10 turnovers per game, that's ready their fifth turnover here in this first half. Good look inside, but Cheney wasn't ready for it. Mark penetrating with the left, gets all the way to the rim. Boy, what a beautiful drive by Tremont Mark. He's made some really good drives in this game. Drives to draw the defense in that one. He's lefty, so you let him get to that left hand. Well, he's a good player. He does everything well. He's not great at any one thing, but does everything well. Houston now 14 points in the paint as they take a four-point lead under five to play in this first half. Vanderplas just lost it. Shed on the breakout. Speed burst. He's got Sasser on the wing for three. Knocked down. What a beautiful transition offense. Jarris Walker knocks the ball away from Vanderplas. And then Jamal Shed. It used to be you take it all the way to the basket. And it would be a bad. Seems like every team's got a number next to it. In Arizona, you're not going to find big guys that run the floor better than Umar Ballo and especially Azulis Tabellis. I mean, he's like a rocket getting down the floor that puts such a, 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 a responsibility on opposing big guys to run the floor kind of wears them out throughout the course of a game yeah that Arizona team they are fun to watch they can fly Virginia looking to end this 7-0 run by Houston Vanderplas is three in and out Vanderplas is a good shooter he transferred in from Ohio he had 17 against Virginia in the NCAA tournament at Assembly Hall his dad was a teammate of Tony Bennett at Wisconsin Green Bay, at Bay playing, playing for Dick Bennett, Tony's dad. Sasser forced to pick up his dribble. Good D by Beekman. Seven on the shot clock for the Cougars. Mark dips his shoulder, but he traveled with it. Houston with their largest lead of the game, up by seven, under four minutes to play. So, John and Jay will see you at the half. All right, Kevin, guys, appreciate it. Let's take a look at our game summer here in Charlottesville. Virginia got off to a hot start. It was a 9 nothing, But then Houston, their offense woke up. Marcus Sasser has knocked down his last three threes from the field, and Houston's opened up a seven-point lead. And yeah, part of the guard analysis is Reese Re Beekman is compromised with that hamstring. 
Clark, that strong shot fake. Yeah, you have to stay down on that. Virginia only four points in their last nine minutes. Yeah, Virginia has to do a better job of taking care of the ball. They have turned it over six times and in a low possession game. You know, six is a lot in the first half. There's still time to go. Mark trying to get to his left. McNeely stays right in front of him. Shed with some space. Offensive glass. Good job by Ben Vanderplas to stay in front of Jamal Shedd. Turned it over. And they call Jamal Shedd for the carry. Third turnover of the game for Houston. Under three minutes to play here in this first half. Clark, two red shirts meet him baseline, trap the ball. And they say off the foot of Walker to stay here with Virginia, 13 on the shot clock. Well, Jairus Walker did a really nice job of coming over from the weak side, and what turned into weak side help became a trap. And they just backed Kihei Clark all the way to the sideline. Substitutions. That was all the way to the sideline. I mean, Kihei Clark was by the lane line and wound up out by the sideline. That one was an aggressive trap by Houston. It's so hard to keep Kihei Clark in front of you. He's so shifty with the ball. There's that elevator play. Armand Franklin going through two, two screeners. They closed the door down, and he's got an open shot. And just like that, the lead is back to four. And the Virginia crowd back in it. Walker trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. The McDonald's All-American gets the floater to go. Well, Houston doing a really good job of spreading the floor. And that's giving the Cougars an opportunity to, at times, go one-on-one -on -one in isolation. And they've got a number of players that can make individual plays. They don't want to make a habit out of it. But oftentimes in this kind of game against the Virginia defense, that may be the best offense. Clark curling off the screen. Rebound goes to Gardner. His mid-range goes. And he's got a great mid-range game. Such a nice touch. From a difficult area to score, that little short corner is not an easy shot. This sellout crowd rising to their feet in Charlottesville. Walker, that's a deep two, and he shows the touch. The five-star recruit coming out of high school. They're showing you why they love this kid. And he shoots the best percentage from three of any of the Houston players. Shoots 37% as a 6'8 freshman. Well, what a good matchup between Jamal Shedd, who's just a bulldog, and Kihei Clark. Franklin curling avoids the block and lays it in. Under a minute to play in this first half. When Virginia gets into their, they call it sides, it's a mover blocker offense, so screening pairs on each side of the floor, very difficult to guard. Sasser's hit his last three threes from straight on. Now Virginia can take this all the way down. A one-second difference, give or take, shot clock to game clock. Now they can take it down to the end and give themselves a chance for an offensive rebound, but not give Houston a chance to take it the other way. G.A. Clark scored the first five points for Virginia. Shot clock's at five. Beekman trying to get busy. No looker to Franklin rising up. Did he beat the buzzer? No, he didn't. Shot clock violation. Seventh turnover of the half for Virginia. Uh, we expected this. Virginia is not. Well, you can get a catch and shoot, but no more than that. And it's important for Houston not to throw it out of bounds here. 
even if Virginia gets a finger on it. And Shed won't even get the shot off to beat the buzzer. So after trailing nine to nothing, Houston comes all the way back, takes a 30 to 26 lead at the half. This is what we expected. Tito's off and get grittier on defense against a really good Houston team. Last year for Virginia, when they trailed at the half, they were 0 for 17. So far this season, when they trail at the half, they are a perfect 4 and 0. This team can come from behind after trailing. Down by four, we start the second half. Immediately they go into Shedrick. Nice pass to Gardner, finishing it strong. Or a lot of contact, but Gardner able to take that little pass from Caden Shedrick. They just screened Shedrick down in the low post, and Gardner just looped down and dove down behind him. That was a really nice play to start the second half for Virginia. Gardner just loves playing against Houston. Walker coming back on the other end, a blocking foul, and one. Well, Jarris Walker has been so strong in this game. Nice dive down and just caught the contact, never took his eyes off the rim. Down the other side, that double team, Tremont Marks got to be in the middle of the lane to try to take that away from Gardner, that dive down from the top. A nice answer for Houston after giving up an easy basket in the first possession. So Jarris Walker completes a three-point play. And this is a kid, as soon as he stepped on campus, he went to work. I was told he dropped 1% body fat, put on 8 pounds of just pure muscle. This kid is trying to go to work here and when they enter the American Conference play. Well, he's a no-ego player. And he blends in. You know, he's got a big-time reputation and very talented. But Kelvin Sampson talked about Jarris Walker and how generous he is with his teammates. Of the NIL money he makes, he makes sure the walk-ons get paid before he takes a penny. Man, I love that. None of my teammates would have done that. You might want to <laughs> think about that, John. Throwing a little, throwing a little cash at your, your analysts. I'm pretty sure you probably make a little more than I do. Sasser, shot clock winding down. It's at two. The runner, short. Good defense by Virginia. Everybody stayed home. Good job by Shedrick to run the floor. Virginia getting back, and they're going to say that's all Virginia. Yeah, Jamal Shedd was back there contesting it, and the crowd thought it went off a of shed. Let's take a look. Well, it looked like Shedrick hit it. Watch Shedrick's right hand here. Yeah, Shedrick hit it. That's a great call, this veteran crew. Ron Gruber, Pat Driscoll, Brent Hampton, they talked about it, got the call correct. Houston with a five-point lead. Mark with his strong hand, two bodies on him, puts up a force. And then coming over is Juwan Roberts giving the foul. What good weak side help. You know, Virginia's got to stay in gaps in this game and make Houston prove it over the top. You don't mind so much. You don't want to give up a straight line drive, but when Shedrick comes over, that might might have been a drop off to Juwan Roberts to get him the bucket. But it certainly opened up the offensive glass. It's just that Mark couldn't get it up on the glass. Gardner calling for it, finds a seam down low and puts another one in. He's in double figures now. He's got ten. One of the rare times when Houston doesn't have any pressure on the ball because the ball was so high out top. And that's a long pass to go right down the gut. In five games in Gardner's career against Houston, averaging almost 15 points, nine rebounds per game. Got to remember, he played at ECU in the American against Houston. Shed comes to that jump stop, pull up jumper, in control, knocks it down. He is so tough. One of the best assist guys with a low turnover rate. He averages close to six assists per game. And. He's from Little Maynard, Texas. Took them to the state tournament a couple of times when that's not been the norm. And at times, he had to guard a five-man out on the floor. He's one of the biggest players on his team. Beekman throwing it up. And on the rebound, they're going to call a foul on Houston's Walker. Shed comes to a two-foot jump stop. And against, against Virginia, you've got to come to a jump stop, play off two feet. But no pressure on the ball. And Kihei Clark can just take you apart because of the overhelp of Houston. Left Jaden Gardner wide open underneath. 
So second foul on Walker. Clark finds Gardner all alone. When Gardner takes that shot, it takes away an offensive rebounder for Virginia. And Virginia doesn't get many second shots generally, but they've had hardly any in this game. Walker will step out and take the three and rattle it in, holding up that follow through. The big man, the freshman, 6'8", he can shoot. He now has 10. And coming into this environment, that's a big game for Jarris Walker. I thought he might throw it into the corner to Tremont Mark, but he's so confident right now. Cross-court pass to Kia Clark. Short. Rebound to Roberts. Clark, since that hot start, is 0 for 6 from the floor. And just like that, back the other end, Sasser finishes. Boy, what a great outlet pass. And Sasser with that left hand just taking on the transition defense. And Virginia does not give up transition baskets. That was a huge bucket in this game. Virginia, one of the most pretty, beautiful campus you will see in the entire country. It is gorgeous. I think that's the lawn. Is that the lawn there where it's such an honor for a, a fourth year or a fifth year, perhaps, to, to live on the lawn? I am not a Virginia expert, but I was told it was the rotunda. Well, that, the, the building's the rotunda, but, but I think they call it the lawn. Correct. And uh, if I remember right, I think Ralph Sampson lived on the lawn. Good play out of the, the double team, and that's a shot that Jaden Gardner usually hits. Largest lead of the game for Houston right now, up by 10. Gardner shows on the hedge. His man Walker goes by. Contact, no call. Walker on the floor trying to keep it alive. It's out of bounds off Houston. When Juwan Roberts was there to grab an offensive rebound, when Shedrick comes over from the weak side to block a shot, that's going to open up the offensive glass, especially if they're up and walked it off. Kelvin Sampson, who should be in the Hall of Fame last year, maybe one of his best coaching jobs ever. When you lose your two-star guards, he completely transformed this team into going into the post. He gets them back this year, and that's why everyone is so excited about what Houston could do. Well, Houston's lost four starters for a few years in a row now. That's been the norm for the Cougars, but they've done a great job developing players, and it's not always evident during the course of the season, but these players are going to practice every day and getting better, and they can step in when there's a need. And the following year, when you lose you know, significant players off a team that went to the Final Four and went to an Elite Eight the next year, you know, that says a lot about their player development. Vanderplas, entry pass to Shedrick, a lot of contact, foul is called on Juwan Roberts. Yeah, Roberts just got caught behind Shedrick, and a good pass in from Vanderplas. So for Roberts, that's his third personal. Just the penetration, and then just an easy pass in when you're that far behind. And you want to try to get three-quarter front, and you certainly don't want to give up deep post position to Caden Shedrick. Shedrick, the redshirt junior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Early on this season, he has been a lot more aggressive offensively, especially calling for the ball, establishing position inside. Well, he's shooting close to 70% on the season, averaging just under 10 points and five rebounds a game. But his real value is as a defender. He's a good shot blocker. And again, he averages over two blocks a game in lower possession games. He also leads the team in steals, so he's active on the defensive end as a big guy. And Virginia does a great job of hedging screens. You give a ball screen, put a big guy in a ball screen, and watch Shedrick here. They ghosted it, so it didn't get all the way to the screen. They find the open man, Tremont Mark. He knocks down the three ball. Boy, that's good offense. Instead of setting the screen, they just ghosted it. So they ran up the screen and then ran right out of it. And then Jamal Shedd able to get that penetration, the help, and then a wide open three from the corner by Tremont Mark. That's good offense by Houston. This ties the largest deficit for Virginia this season. That ball is out of bounds, and they call a foul on Beekman. So Reggie Cheney just ghosts that, and Shed able to get in the middle of the lane, drew three defenders. But again, a little bit of overhelp by Virginia. 
you know, not all those white shirts had to rally to the ball. You got to stay with shooters. You give up a tough two, that's one thing. You give up an open three, that's another. Shed gets on the floor to keep the possession alive for Houston. Virginia trailed by 11 at, against Michigan. They would come back to win that game. Pull up jumper, no good. Offensive glass tipped around. Houston still has another opportunity. Mark caught in the air. Sasser from deep. And it's Houston being aggressive, but they travel with it. Well, Houston having to manufacture some things, but their activity level is good. And that's why they have this 11-point lead. They're Kellen Sampson, assistant to his father, Kelvin Sampson. And Kellen's an excellent assistant coach. That's a really good staff that Kelvin Sampson has with Qantas White. Hollis Price played for him at Oklahoma. You're Virginia. How do you get back in the offensive flow? Movement. You know, there's there's just not a lot of movement for Virginia right now. A lot of dribbling, not a lot of passing. Good fake. McNeely, the freshman, knocks down his second three. You know, the West Virginia High School Player of the Year. Isaac McNeely can really shoot it. Well, my little Sean McNeil played at West Virginia, now at Ohio State. Except he might shoot it better. Houston's lead is at eight. Hey, what a matchup with Reese Beekman on Marcus Sasser. Sasser has to try to beat the buzzer. His three's no good. Cheney keeps it alive. But it's so hard to get a block out. Reggie Cheney, nobody blocked him out. He had a wide open path right down the lane. And now all of a sudden, Virginia's got to play 30 more seconds of defense. Mark wants to clear out going against McNeely. No good. But Shedrick's going to be called for the foul as he came over to help defensively. Boy, that's a really good move by Tremont Mark. Under control. Got the defender off the floor, able to get to the left hand. Couldn't kiss it off the glass but just an under-control move down the lane. Got the bump, the little up-and-under move, and then Shedrick hit him and he says he was trying to come down. Mark misses the first for Caden Shedrick. That is his third personal foul, and he'll take a seat as Jaden Gardner comes back in. On the road is where you really have to knock down free throws, and Tremont Mark you know, shoots close to 80% on the season. to their sides offense. That's going to give them a little bit better movement. And when you get an open shot, John, you got to knock it down. Sounds simple. But it's so hard to get open shots for both teams, but especially hard against Houston. And when you get an open look, you have to knock it down because there aren't going to be many offensive rebounds available. Under 12 minutes to play in the second half. Kihei Clark trying to poke it away. Houston still with it. Cheney running the floor, throwing it down. Well, give Jamal Shedd a ton of credit. He got the ball knocked away, but kept it alive. And Houston's just relentless in their pursuit of the ball. If they can't grab it, they're going to keep it alive and give a teammate a chance to grab it. Reggie Cheney providing huge minutes off the bench. He's a guy who knows his role as a senior. A good fade screen by Van der Plaas. Reaching foul called against Shed. Keeping the ball alive and Reggie Cheney, the beneficiary, the selfless, maybe guarding the ball and keeping the initial penetration out of the lane. But also, there have been times where I think Virginia has overhelped in this game. And you certainly want to help. You just don't want to overhelp and create additional openings for, for Houston. Houston's taken advantage of those openings. Houston, excuse me, excuse me, up by 11. As we approach 11 minutes to play in the second half. Van 
Chaplas rejected by Chaney. Boy, what a recovery by Reggie Chaney. Off balance due to the shot fake. Still made the recovery. Went up, got that block with the left hand. Sasser forced to pick up his dribble. Emmanuel Sharp, the freshman, no good. Emmanuel Sharp is a pure scorer. He's one of those guys that with time to develop, he's going to be an outstanding player. Gardner, pick and roll. And that's usually his spot, John. He likes that short corner area. His mid-range game is excellent. It's really, the, the rhythm disruption that Virginia usually puts on other people, other teams, Houston has disrupted all the rhythm for Virginia. You wonder how much a, a part of that Reese Beekman with that hamstring is because he doesn't look like himself. They called an offensive foul, a legal screen by Emmanuel Sharp. Reese Beekman, the official word on him with that hamstring is it's something they're just going to manage week to week because a hamstring is one of those nagging injuries that you just need rest for it to go away so you continue to play. It might be with him for a little bit this season. Well, the amount of time it would take to, to heal it completely would take take up the season. And as long as he's not going to do further damage, you know, he and his medical team feel like he can play. But he's clearly not 100%. Franklin driving baseline. Cheney strips it away and too active there. They call it on Reggie Cheney. A ton of contact on the initial action, and then Cheney got him with the second round of it. Just a terrific drive by Franklin. Hard to believe there wasn't enough contact for a foul there. Franklin, the senior out of Indianapolis, Indiana, nails the first free throw. Coming into this game, Armin Franklin had scored 88 points, but 47 of those 88 came in two games. He had 26 against Baylor and 21, I think, in their first game. But Franklin spent some time in Houston this summer working with John Lucas. The great John Lucas that played at Maryland. He was also ACC champion in tennis, including being all ACC in basketball, the number one overall pick in the NBA draft. I think it was 76. Kihei Clark a little too tight defensively. They call him for the reaching. Well, that was a smart play by Marcus Sasser. Kihei Clark had that right hand out. And he almost Harden-esque. He went, it, it went right into it. Watch his right hand. He just goes right into it to draw that foul. Now, Houston obviously wasn't happy with that loss to Alabama. You never want to lose to anyone. But... That might have helped this team wake up and realize they needed to come together. Sasser was taking tough shots, kind of shots like that. They had a 15-point lead that evaporated against Alabama. Well, Alabama went small in the second half on Houston. They were able to drive it, get into the lane, and collapse the defense. They kicked it out to open shooters. That small lineup was really effective. And Houston didn't do a good job guarding the ball, which they normally do. They're normally able to guard the ball effectively, and that's, that's really... John, the first, the first facet of any defense, can you guard the ball and stay out of help? The best, the best teams stay out of help. It's not that they help, they stay out of it. Kihei Clark with a strong drive. He scored the first five points of the game for Virginia, but has been quiet since. And he makes the first. Virginia's next game is on ACC Network on Tuesday. They'll take on number 25, Miami. Coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern. Number two, Virginia. Number 25, Miami. And Miami got a win today. I think they beat St. Francis. But the Hurricanes can score, especially Isaiah Wong. He's having a terrific year. That last foul called against Shedd. That was his third for Houston. Cheney going one-on-one. -on -one. Kick out. Shed. Three ball. Got it. Well, Kelvin Sampson deciding he wanted to go into Cheney against Vanderplas, and Cheney got around him. And that was a really nice pass to the opposite side of the floor. How about these minutes by Reggie Cheney off the bench? The assist there for the big man. Kihei Clark driving hard, and it's Cheney with the block. 
It looked like Marcus Sasser was there from behind as well. There was a bump by Cheney as Clark was going up, but no call. And Cheney's been working so hard, he was tugging at his jersey. He said, Coach, I need a breather. Yeah, that, Cheney bumped him really hard there, and I think Sasser was able to knock that away with his left hand. That was an awful lot of contact on an airborne shooter. Clark has a switch now. Roberts on him. Vanderplas from the wing. Virginia has had some open looks tonight, have not been able to hit him down. A low cross screen, screen for the screener action. Nothing there for Sharp. Walker, find Sharp from the wing. Too strong. Strong rebound by Gardner. And there's Sasser trying to strip it away, but he's out of bounds. Yeah, Sasser saying, How'd I wind out of, out of bounds? I got pushed. <laughs> Time out on the floor. Houston trying to plead their case. Man, they just get up and down and they can score. Yeah, maybe the best offense in the country going against one of the best defenses in the country. Rick Barnes and that Tennessee program, they can really guard. And, John, I've been notified by a bunch of my Virginia graduate friends that it's referred to as the grounds. It's okay. not a campus, it's the grounds. I stand corrected. No, it's not you, Stan, it's me. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, I always thought Browns was in a coffee discussion, but we will accede to the wishes of the Wahoo fans. You know what Wahoo is? What's that? It's a fish that can drink more than its weight. Okay. Roberts has no trouble there with the lefty hook. And a great answer by Jawan Roberts. Getting to that left hand, the right shoulder. And when you play against Virginia, whenever the, the Wahoos make a run, you know, you've got to answer it. It's tough to score against this team. Clark at daylight decides to give it up to McNeely. That's why you have to stay down in that shot back. If he wants to take it, just take it over an outstretched arm. McNeely from way downtown. Shedrick trying to tip it alive. And Houston will slow things down up by 10 as we approach six and a half to play. Houston trying to Play a little bit higher on the floor, raise up this Virginia defense. There's the double team. And it's Beekman with the steal, looking to push it. Beekman with daylight rising up. Shedrick on the offensive glass. Whenever Virginia brings a double team, they keep the ball out from coming out ball side. And that means you have to look opposite. And Reese Beekman was just waiting there like a defensive back intercepting a pass. Caden Shedrick in double figures. He's got 10 for Virginia. The lead is cut to eight. Shot clock winding down at three. Sasser, pull-up jumper. Tough shot rolling off. Virginia gets the stop offensively, Jay. What do you want to see? Well, they've got to get a score here. That's a good place to go. Gardner got his man in the air and will draw the foul. After getting a stop, Virginia's offense always seems to look so much better. But really, this game for Virginia, as much as getting a score, it's about getting stops on the other end. Jarris Walker just gives an angle to the basket to Jaden Gardner, and he's going to get you off the floor. So far, I think Virginia's perfect from the foul line. And they score about a quarter of their points from the free throw line. And that's about the number they've had today. So Houston's got to keep Virginia off the foul line. Houston's been really difficult to score against. You can't foul them and give them easy points. Gardner misses the first free throw of the day for Virginia. 11 of 12 from the line as a team. Ball movement to start. There's some windshield wiper around the front. Houston spreading them out offensively. Walker, pull up mid range, in and out, keeping alive. That's Tremont Mark resetting the possession. And what a play by Tremont Mark. He came from all the way on the left side of the floor 
just to keep that ball alive. Shed pick and roll with Cheney. Extra pass to Walker on the wing. Another three for the freshman. Boy, that's a big time play by Reggie Cheney on the short roll. Drew a help defender to stop him from getting to the basket. Just kicks it out to Jarris Walker. And Walker has been money in this game. Didn't rush it. Clark cut off. Gardner cutting. And he'll be fouled going up by Cheney. We. Well, you can't understate how big of a basket that was. Now watch this short roll by Reggie Chaney. Catches it, doesn't walk with it, but drew three defenders and then kicked it out to Jarris Walker. And that's a lot of ground for Jaden Gardner to have to recover to get back to him. That was a great play by Reggie Chaney. Gardner's putting together quite a ball game for Virginia. He's a team high, 12 points right now, four or five from the free throw line. He was leading this team in scoring until the last three games when Kihei Clark averaged about 17 and a half over his last three. Clark had 18 against Florida State and James Madison. He put 16 up against Michigan in the last three. And Clark picks his pocket. Pumps the fist. The grad student trying to get the crowd back in it. Well, he was sitting on that. Right-hand dribble by Jamal Shedd just went behind his back, took it away. That was the first transition basket of the game for Virginia. This is the loudest John Paul Jones Arena has been all day. Eighth turnover from Houston as Virginia turning it up defensively. Boy. Right now over on ABC, meantime, Florida, Oregon State, the SRS Distribution, Las Vegas Bowl, Ferris State on its way to a Division II National Championship over on ESPNU, and up next here on ESPN2, Montana State, South Dakota State, John and Jay. Hi, right, Kevin, appreciate the updates. McNeely misses the three coming out of the break. And that's the second elevator play. That was run about the free throw line, and McNeely was wide open for that shot. He's not going to get a better one. Shed goes all the way, finishes over the shot blocker. Boy, that was a big sequence for Houston. Getting a stop even though McNeely had a great look and then scoring on the other end to give Houston a little bit more breathing room in a game where it's been difficult for either team to breathe throughout. Beekman finds Shedrick, the two-hand slam. Well, Reese Beekman got into the middle of the lane. And a little bit of overhelp there on the part of Houston to give up the easy bucket. Under three minutes to play, Houston up by six. And Virginia only has four team fouls, so they can be aggressive. Walker finds Mark Splappa. Boy, another great pass by Jarris Walker. And Tremont Mark has not hesitated. When he's had a good look, he's gone straight up with it. Just when Virginia makes a run, Houston answers back up by nine. And miscommunication, Shedrick can't handle the pass. Well, it was a tough pass to catch, but even if Shedrick caught it, what was he going to do with it there? And a terrific job after just getting out of that ball screen and slipping out of it. That's a terrific pass by Jarris Walker to look opposite. But Virginia's got to continue to drive the ball. We're getting into a late-game situation, but... And Houston's got him in the double bonus, so every time there's a common foul, Virginia's shooting two free throws. It's not that Houston's intentionally trying to burn clock here. They just don't want to be in too much of a hurry. Walker, tough turn. Oh. Whoa! Boy, that's How one did they hit that one? That's one of those where Kelvin Sampson says, hey, great shot, son. Just don't take it again. <laughs> where he's having a great game under difficult circumstances. 15 points for Jarris Walker. McNeely driving, spinning up with his left and finishing plus the foul. And that's a great drive. I think Virginia has to continue to do that. Drive the ball, put Houston in a position to foul. And it's a bonus that he got this to go with the potential for a three-point play. But every time you, you drive it, you give them the chance to foul. 
What a great individual play, and that's tough turning over that left shoulder for a right-hander to shoot that kind of turnaround. McNeely converts the three-point play, 125 to play. Lead is cut to eight. When McNeely touches the rim, do they count it as a miss? <laughs> he is pure. That foul, you, know, you can go for the ball without fear of fouling because that's just a 15 foul. So Virginia with full court pressure. If you're Virginia, at what point do you have to start thinking about fouling? Not yet. It's still a little bit too early. Beekman gives it up. I mean, if you're going to do it, do it right away. But I think you want to go for steals, and especially now on the inbounds. Go for a steal. If you foul, fine. If that's your strategy, to foul. That's the fifth team foul on the NBA. I think that's a sixth team foul. Yeah. He just hurts the fifth. It's a sixth. They were at four before that Clark foul. And that's the, the next foul, so that puts them at six. So on the next foul, it's one and one for Houston. So they corrected it. it is indeed 16 fouls now on Virginia. Next foul against Virginia will send Houston the line for one on one. Sasser inbounds, and he'll be fouled immediately by Beekman. Marcus Sasser, an excellent free throw shooter, shooting 86% on the season. And late in the game against Alabama, Houston did not shoot free throws well, but it was largely a function of who got fouled. It was smart of Houston to get the ball into the hands of an excellent free throw shooter and their leading scorer, Marcus Sasser. Houston from the line today, three for four. For Sasser, this will be his first trip at the charity straight. And for Houston right now, with an eight-point lead that could turn into ten if both these are made, and they're not. You don't want to foul, and you don't want to give up an open three. So no threes, no fouls. Beekman's running the point for Virginia. Vanderplas rising up. And Kihei Clark will give up the foul. It looked like Kihei Clark fouled after Jarris Walker had given up the ball. But I think he fouled Jarris Walker. Virginia on the day, shooting 5 of 21 from downtown, under 24%. And, and Virginia's had open looks. It was not for lack of some open shots, but for, uh, Houston is really difficult to play against. And Walker on the season shooting just under 60% from the foul line. And these are some big free throws on the road to try to extend this lead to 10 with under a minute to go in regulation. And Walker does make the first. Tomorrow on ABC at 3 Eastern, women's basketball. Tennessee Vols taking on number two Stanford Cardinal. Should be a good matchup on ABC 3 p.m. Eastern. Well, Jairus Walker, John, has had a spectacular game. To come into this environment, playing against a team that really disrupts rhythm. I mean, th this is the best game that he's played all season long, and he's had some good, really good passer. He's got great passing instincts. Ten-point game, under a minute to play. And you know Kelvin Sampson and his staff were talking about no threes, no fouls. To stay solid here. Beekman stripped going up. And they're going to call the foul. Now, Reggie Chaney was right there. He just reached in. And Kelvin Sampson asking for a walk. But Houston, Bell, 32, Reggie, Chaney. You know, Reggie Chaney just brought that right arm down. Instead of just staying staying big, make him score a tough two over you. Just a tiny little tick across the arm, but more than enough for a foul. And that gives Virginia the chance to shoot a couple free throws, score with no time going off the clock, and then being set up to press. 
So for Cheney, that was his fourth. As Roberts will come back in for him, and Dukeman makes the first. So right now for Houston, it's all about possession. Getting the ball inbounds cleanly and being prepared to get fouled. Sasser knows he's going to get fouled, holds on to it, and the senior will calmly walk to the line. It's always nice for a scorer at the end of the game to get fouled, knowing you can put a couple extra points on the board. After suffering that tough loss to Alabama, what would you learn about Houston today? Well, they're a resilient team. I mean, you're not going to go, no team's going to go through the season unbeaten. And, you know, that was a game where maybe maybe there was something in the minds of Houston. They lost in a, in a one-point game at Alabama last year in Tuscaloosa that maybe they thought, hey, you know, just revenge, they're just automatically going to win. But they had opportunities to win that game, didn't take advantage of them. You give great credit to Alabama because they're legit. Like, Alabama's legit. But to bounce back in their, their last two games, you know, especially here, I mean, this is a program win, I think, for if they're able to hang on for Houston to come into this this building and get a win against the number two team in the country. And you've got another Final Four caliber team for Houston. Sasser now 13 points on the game for Houston. Franklin has some space and he knocks down the three. So Virginia not done yet. But as long as Houston continues to bang down free throws, you know, that, that's one thing that Kelvin Sams is talking to you. Can't, you can't leave a three-point shooter open. You, know, you give up a two, that's one thing. Can't give up a three. Got caught ball watching there. And, but as long as Houston bangs their free throws down, there's just not enough time. So Tremont Mark goes to the line. He will shoot two. Tremont Mark's another guy who's bounced back. He did not have his best game against Alabama. Fouled out in it. And he has been much more focused and had a much better performance in this game. And this is, the, you can't understate, this is a difficult game to play in. It's like being in a dentist's office for two hours. <laughs> Clark looking for a quick bucket. Find Shedrick, and they give him the easy pass to the lane. Shedrick with 14 points now. Houston inbounds, and Mark is fouled immediately. Houston has so many good ball handlers in the backcourt with Shed, Sasser, and Mark. And all of them can make free throws. They just are smart about getting the ball in. If you get in trouble, call a timeout. And there's a great article in The Athletic this week talking about just where Houston has come from. Kelvin Sampson, when he took over this program back in 2014, I mean, they had to practice at times in the rec center, like with other students. Houston's practicing. Their locker room had rats, cats running around. Other people had their passcode to the locker room so their stuff would get stolen. From where this program has come, now people see a top five number next to their name, and we just kind of expect that from Houston. Well, and plus the cats in the locker room just weren't tough enough if there were that many rats <laughs> running around. The cut guy was talking to Kelvin Sansa today. I asked him, hey, have you ever been here to Virginia before? He said, well, I've come here to scout, but I was here to play baseball. You know, he was a catcher in baseball. And he said, I hit a double off the wall and then got picked off a second. So that's a, that was his memory of Virginia. This is going to be a much better memory of the University of Virginia for Kelvin Sam. Number five, Houston comes to Virginia and gives the Cavaliers their first loss of the season. For Houston, a big road win.